In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is, is the feast or the, the commemoration of Saint uh, Agapetus. Uh, he was a martyr in the early church and just a young boy of 15 years old. Uh, he was uh, brought before the authorities, denounced of being a Christian. And uh, not only did he not renounce his faith, he boldly preached the faith and uh, upbraided them for their lack, for their lack of faith. Uh, so as usual, he was, he was tortured and finally uh, condemned to be thrown to the wild beasts in the arena, uh, but they would not touch him. And so uh, he was beheaded, and thus uh, St. Agapetus uh, became a glorious martyr, and we remember him even today. Uh, but I would like to speak today uh, at more at length about St. Jane Francis de Chantal, uh, the, the founder of the Visitation and um, spiritual directee of St. Francis de Sales. Uh, her feast is coming up this Sunday, uh, so we won't be able to have a chance to hear about her, so I will speak about her today. Um, so St. Fran Jane Francis de Chantal uh, was uh, from the years 1572 to 1641. Uh, she was a noblewoman, and she married uh, the Baron de Chantal at age 21. And she um, had six children, uh, but three of whom died in infancy. But she had a very good marriage. She was a very beautiful woman, but also excelled in the virtues of modesty and humility, um, understanding what the purposes of physical beauty were. So very frequently her husband was away on business, uh, being a member of the nobility, and when her husband was gone, uh, St. Jane Francis de Chantal would dress very simply and plainly. And people remarked at this, being of her status, she should be dressing up more. But she replied, the eyes which I must please are a hundred miles away. So she only dressed up for two people, her, uh, her husband and God. And those are the only times she would dress up, going to Mass or when her husband was, was, was at home. Uh, she was a very capable householder. She managed the estate uh, quite well. And also she was very dedicated to the poor. Uh, she personally gave bread and soup to everyone who came to the door. And in fact, some poor persons, after receiving alms, would go away, but then come back, pretending to be somebody else. And she knew who they were, but she would give them alms a second time. So she was asked why she did this, why she didn't send them away for their dishonesty. But she replied, what if God sent me away when I came to confession for the same sins? So a very, uh, very supernatural attitude. Uh, so despite, I mean, her happy marriage, it, it, it was only happy for seven years uh, because her husband was killed in a hunting accident. Um, he was sh uh, shot by one of his friends who was out hunting with him. And his last words as he lay dying were to the man who had killed him. And he said, don't you hate yourself for you have done nothing wrong. And then he expired. Uh, so a great example of forgiveness from the Baron de Chantal. Uh, but it wasn't so easy for uh, Jane Francis. She struggled very much with forgiving the man who had killed her husband in this accident. And in fact, it took her years, years of really working at it to where she could even stand the sight of him. Uh, but she kept praying, she kept asking God for help, and eventually, not only did she overcome her anger and bitterness towards this man, she was actually able to serve as godmother to one of his children. So uh, just to prove that forgiveness is not easy, even for the saints. Forgiveness is not easy. They have to work at it. In fact, that's why they become saints, is because they do work to overcome uh, the things like, you know, bitterness and anger and so on. Um, and part of what, uh, you know, part of what made that forgiveness so difficult was that she had to return to live with her father-in-law. Um, although uh, her husband had inherited a, an estate, he had also inherited, inherited a lot of debt. And so when he died, uh, Jane Francis lost pretty much everything and now had to move back in with her father-in-law. And it was compounded because the, 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 the house, um, the manager of the house at the time was one of his servants who was very severe. And this servant was also um, her father-in-law's mistress. So that made life was, was rather difficult for her. But she endured it all with patience and gentleness. 
Um, and what, what helped her out through these difficult times uh, was she finally acquired a spiritual director uh, by the name of St. Francis de Sales. And um, so he was, he was greatly influential in her, of course, as we know. And uh, at first meeting with him, uh, St. Jane uh, uh, told St. Francis that she wanted to join a convent of nuns, being a widow, uh, but he told her to wait. Um, but after three years uh, of direction under Francis de Sales, uh, he finally told her that not only uh, no, was it, that she wasn't going to join a convent, uh, Francis de Sales wanted her to found a convent. And so uh, she did. Uh, between uh, Jane Francis de Chantel and Francis de Sales, they established the order of the visitation uh, nuns. Uh, and this was an, this was an interesting uh, thing at the time. It was kind of uh, revolutionary for, for uh, religious orders, we could say. Um, it took its name, the, the visitation, St. Francis called it that, Francis de Sales, uh, after Our Lady visiting her cousin Elizabeth and helping her in those final um, months of pregnancy. So this convent was going to be um, an active order. It was not going to be cloistered or contemplative, but it was going to be active, uh, kind of going around and helping people. And furthermore, even, even more strangely, uh, it was going to accept any, anyone. Any woman, old or young, sick or infirm, uh, the, could apply and join this convent, which was very unusual because at the time, convents were strictly cloistered, and if, if a woman couldn't handle the, the physical austerities of the fasting and penance that, that, that cloistered convents did at the time, they, they would be sent away. So you had these young girls wanting to, to give themselves to Christ, to a life of prayer and service, but they had nowhere to go. And so uh, Jane Francis de Chantel and Francis de Sales uh, established that order of the visitations. I, in fact, it, at one point, um, I think Jane, um, St. Jane took in a woman who was 83 years old and took her in as, as a nun. So, and she was criticized. She was criticized for it. But she says, what do you want me to do? I'm on their side. I'm one of them is what she would say about the, 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 these, these poor, sick persons. She re realized that in herself. Um, but of course, they were, they were um, any time you do something that's very pleasing to God, or I would say rather um, extraordinary, out of, out of the ordinary, uh, unusual, uh, you'll meet with criticism and resistance. And so that um, is what happened with, with this order of the visitation. They were in fact ordered to stop um, they had to be cloistered for a time. They were ordered to stop being so um, active, uh, and they did. So they were shut down for a number of years, um, but after which they were allowed over time, uh, through prayer and, and, and petition, they were allowed to recontinue. Um, it was for this community of nuns that Fra St. Francis de Sales would write his book, A Treatise on the Love of God. Uh, St. Jane, by her example and perseverance and very wise governing, was, eventually, was able to continue her active ministry, and she would found 86 convents of the visitation of nuns in her lifetime. So quite, quite popular. Uh, but she would endure great suffering over her, the rest of her life. Uh, not only was there opposition to her order, uh, but non, not long after founding it, uh, her beloved confessor, Francis de Sales, would die. Also, uh, one of uh, her son would be killed, um, a plague swept through France, and her daughter-in-law and son-in-law would also die. And she endured all these things um, uh, well right up to the time of her death. Uh, she died at the age of 69. Uh, so, um, you know, the example, when, when she first went to St. Francis de Sales uh, and, and asked him about founding a convent or wanted him to be her spiritual director, um, he didn't believe her at first, and he wouldn't accept her. And he told her to wait. Uh, because, and that is proper in that we should always be suspicious of ourselves when we have these grand ideas or are filled with zeal. We should always uh, uh, um, give ourselves a period of probation because it's too easy for our natural inclinations to, uh, and natural zeal to impel us to do something great, uh, but for too human a reason. We have to make sure that if we want to accomplish something in the spiritual life, it is done for a spiritual reason and for God alone and not for any kind of selfish personal reason. And so St. Francis uh, was able to, he proved the virtue of uh, Jane Francis de Ch Chantal 
not by the um, extraordinary uh, visions that she would have or her extraordinary desires for God, but by her ordinary piety. That is how you prove somebody's sincerity. How is this person ordinarily? What is their daily practice of virtue? How are they in normal circumstances? That is how you prove the sincerity of somebody's extraordinary beliefs. And so we should take that to heart uh, anytime because uh, something I, I forgot to mention, uh, St. Fran Jane Francis de Chantal, when, when she left to found her convent, she left behind two teenage children. She had a daughter and a, and a young son. And she left them behind and left them in the care of others. Uh, very unusual. So that is not something that ordinarily would be done, but only after a great period of discernment. And that's how you do it. As I said, you have to look at not your extraordinary desires. You've got to look at your ordinary piety. So I'd encourage everyone to do that. Look at, look at ourselves and look at our daily activities, our thoughts, words, deeds, our omissions. Are we self-disciplined? Are we careful in prayer? Are we attentive in prayer? Or, or are we always being blown about, right? Whatever our faults uh, may be, look to the solidity of normal virtue, and that's how we can tell if something extraordinary comes along. Uh, you know, is it from God or is it from ourselves? Uh, so in any case, we can always uh, uh, turn ourselves to those daily duties and try to do them as best we can, uh, as did St. Jane Francis de Chantel. Uh, let us ask for intercession. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.